Yeah, g'day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about these pink oxide wheels. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that absolutely hate them, but these are fairly cheap. They don't cost a lot of money. I've got diamond wheels and there's CBN wheels and there's ABN wheels. So, but typically these wheels don't cost much money. They could cost, these are about $13. This is about $20, the Kinnick. Now, you'll hear things that says vitrified. Typically, these pink wheels are aluminium oxide. Depends on the particle size. They're fused together with glass. Yeah, so let's not get too technical. Uh, it's a simple procedure. But what you've got to be careful of, even when we talk about the grit size, how good is the grit size? Does it have sharp edges? Has it got round edges? And during the uh, the process of putting the molten glass to hold it all together, some people have got better processes than others. So sometimes the grit size, 60 grit, is going to give a bit of a rough grind. So you're really looking for about an 80 grit. And you can really feel the wheels. If you're going to purchase a wheel, look at it closely. Look at the surface. The surface on this is pretty good, and it's even. That's what you're looking for, a very even surface. The last thing you want to do is get a surface, and as you can see, through magnification, have a look at that. So that's what that looks like up close. Bit of a different structure on the Kinnick. So, these aren't expensive wheels. But if you can find the one that's got a reasonably good finish, and one of the ways to judge a wheel is look at the... We'll, we'll see whether you can see it on here. You want to have a look at the grain structure to make sure that it's fairly uniform. You can see how, when you look at that, it's not uniform. See how it looks different there than there? One thing about these Kinnick wheels, uh, it depends how they're made. You can see the difference in that grain structure there. So try and find a wheel, even though they might be cheap. If you're at your dealer, and some of the Oregon ones or Tacomic, they're about 60 bucks a wheel. So when you pick the wheel up, have a good look at the wheel and try to make sure that the surface texture is even. But more critical, look at the edge of the wheel, like what I just showed you in this one. And try and see that the edge of the wheel is uniform. Because the grit size and the way that it's made, uh, one manufacturer can make better wheels out of 80 grit than another manufacturer. It just depends on the process being used now there's a lot of people that hate these wheels but i don't mind them uh i find out that they last quite a long time for the price that they cost but i'm a homeowner and i'm not going to pay here in australia if you were to buy a cbn wheel i've got a diamond wheel but i got that relatively cheap for about 150 dollars for the uh tungsten carbide but i'm certainly not paying 500 dollars for a uh a CBN wheel. That's what they cost here in Australia, $500. And even these wheels here, uh, there's not a lot of, there's, there's very few companies that are bringing any type of these wheels into the country. If you go over in America, you would have a much bigger range. If you went over to Europe, you'd have a much bigger range. Now, the better wheels are the ones that are resin bonded not glass vitrified. So the glass ones are the cheapest, whereas the resin bonded ones are much better. You'll see some of the brown resin bonded ones on some of the cheaper grinders. The grinder might be cheap, but the actual wheel's good. So I would really like to purchase these locally out of brown resin bonded. You'll also find out a lot of the brown resin bonded, uh, these heat up much 
more than the brown resin bonded. So the brown resin bonded run much cooler. And most of the brown resin bonded that I've seen are at least 100 grit. So be careful of that. Now, one of the other problems that you get buying these wheels is that the manufacturers fail to put the grit size on them. Nowhere on this Kinnick wheel does it tell you what grit size it is. And as I say, you can really feel the grit size here. It feels smooth, but the when you look right at the edge of the wheel, you can see that there's some parts of the wheel that where the grains are bigger than the others. They're not uniform. And that's the problem buying these wheels that you want to try and make sure have a good look at the wheel just don't if the dealer's got them on the shelf pick them up and have a good look at them and try and see whether the actual grain or the particle size is fairly even in size and doesn't look over the place if they're in a blister pack or they're sealed in a packet you can't do that uh yeah but anyway, that's that's what I've found out using these wheels. Of if you take it nice and slow, you normally get a good finish on your chainsaw chain, provided you use an 80 grit as a minimum. 100 grits better. I don't have the luxury. I don't live in Europe or America. I can't buy 100 grit here in these pink oxide wheels. No chain. Look. If you go down to the local local mower place or chainsaw place, uh, the only chainsaw places here, there's, we don't even have Oregon dealers that sell uh, Oregon bars and chains. They're only sold in some small mower shops as a bit of a sideline. So the biggest dealers here for chainsaws is only one. There's 600 dealerships uh, in Australia for still, and you won't. And they don't sell these. Uh, the only thing they sell. They sell some of the Jolly Evo Tacomic grinders and they sell the wheels and they're about three times more expensive than these. $60 versus $20. So I'll be buying the $20 Hurricane ones from Jono and Jono in Ballarat because they're uh, much cheaper and they work okay. They certainly uh, do what I want them to do. So, And that's what it comes down to. The biggest problem that you find out using these wheels, people say, oh, you know, they'll blue the, the tooth. That's because you're going too fast and hard using the grinder. When you use a chainsaw grinder, you have to go nice and slow. And an example is that when you bring this down, that you're going down onto the chain, you don't hold it down like that. Straight away, if you do that, you're going to blue the tooth. You bring it down and gently touch off, on, off, on. And the whole idea of touching it on and bringing it off is that when you lift it up, it gets a chance for the tooth to cool down. And don't lift it up in the air, just take it off the tooth. And even with the grinding wheel spinning around, it will create air. There'll be air current blowing over the tooth uh, with this spinning around. Won't be a lot, but it's enough. So it's just off, on, about that speed. Off, on, off, on. Nice and slow. And don't take big cuts. So when you put the chain into the rails, make sure that when you adjust, when you're adjusting your backstop, that the tooth just touches the wheel. That's all you want. It's just got to touch the wheel because if it touches it too much, it's going to grind too much. And you always hear people that are hand filers will say, oh, I hate grinders, they take too much off. It's because the person operating it doesn't know how to do it properly. So yeah. Just back off because it's easy to take a little bit more metal off. But if you take too much metal off, you can't replace it. So, look, I hope that helps, especially with those wheels. Uh, a lot of people put these pink wheels down. Uh, I know, look, they are the cheapest. Uh, now, they do come, if you look at Tacomic, there's a green one. There's different colours for the different grit sizes. And as I said, you might find out that if you go to a small dealer, they just won't sell these. Uh, so, you know, if you go to uh, certain steel dealers, they don't even stock the wheels. You've got to order them in. So, yeah, not the easiest thing to do. And some of the big manufacturers like Norton, as far to my knowledge, if they do make them, uh, I've never even heard that they make them here in Australia. So, and I guess the reason they don't make them is because 
the population of Australia is only 25 million. If you look at Europe, you know, you've got hundreds of millions of people that live in Europe. So, you know, you're going to sell a lot more than, than what you will in Australia. And that's probably one of the problems with Australia is that because we're so small compared to Europe and America and other places, is that if you're selling something here in Australia with a smaller population, your sales are going to be a lot smaller than overseas. So then you've got to feel, is it worth doing that? But certainly with chainsaws, a lot of people here, especially in rural Victoria, so that's country Victoria or country New South Wales uh, or South Australia, where there's a lot of uh, timber felling going on uh, and chainsaws are very popular, as well as the harvester chains that chop them down as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.